കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം നമസ്തെ So recently we did a small series just the beginning of the Patanjali Yoga Sutras and in one of those series I described how I had had some trouble with my former so-called disciples who had turned against me and even organized against me and tried to do a whole uh, illegal number and oh it was just a big mess So one of our viewers who's a student in good standing wrote I can't fathom how those people could act with such malice against their guru where is their gratitude indeed they were not sadakas but the worst kind of people I think that pornography thing they did is called guru droha and carries heavy bad karma well you're right <laughs> so since you're a student in good standing as opposed to the others i'm going to explain it now misunderstanding carries a heavy karmic load because it carries an emotional charge in other words if you misunderstand something it's not just a mental phenomenon it's also an emotional phenomenon So every time you misunderstand something it leads to emotional stress. And this stress if not handled is accumulative. So it grows over time. So consider the situation, the relationship between a disciple and a guru. Now a guru if he's a real guru is going to be in a higher state of consciousness than the disciple that means he has access to consciousness and views that the disciple does not so in many cases the guru is going to say things and do things that the disciple cannot understand is intrinsically incapable of understanding who doesn't have the experience or the background or even the state of consciousness to understand and this is going to create misunderstanding now in addition to that there's the phenomenon of misunderstood terminology which we've covered extensively in our series on matrix learning and i'm not going to go into it too much here except to say that misunderstanding the definitions of terms also creates emotional stress and it's also cumulative with respect to the object what do i mean by the object the person who is giving you the terminology that you misunderstand and it's not always you know the big technical terms that are misunderstood In fact, most often it's the small relationship words in the English language that have multiple definitions and senses. Like if, such, that, for, with, up, out, and so on like that. Look in the dictionary. These have sometimes dozens of different meanings. Or in the case of pronoun relative pronouns like that, huh? it's a complex grammatical construction that almost nobody understands because they flunked english in school <laughs> so that means people students especially are constantly accumulating misunderstood terminology huh they're getting things wrong and as a consequence they can't apply the knowledge that they're being given and worse than that they start to identify the teacher as the source or the cause of these misunderstandings and the consequent emotional stress now the ego wants to always be right 
So when a person receives a communication that they misunderstand, and as a result, they're unable to apply it, the ego says, well, I can't be wrong. I can't have a misunderstanding. I'm so smart. See, here I am studying with my guru, who is the greatest guru in the world. Huh? Again, another device that feeds the ego. People think, well, my guru has to be the greatest guru because he's mine. <laughs> but actually, and in fact, <laughs> The really great gurus are inaccessible to people like that. Ramana Maharshi, Kanchi Mahaparyava. Uh, these, these gurus are inaccessible. Sheshadri Swami go. Because they are not on the state of consciousness where they can connect with these, this level of guru. So you get an ordinary guru. <laughs> Someone who knows, but is not, you know, so powerful and highly developed as the really great gurus. Because that's the guru you deserve. But even this guru has access to states of consciousness that you just plain don't. So you're going to accumulate misunderstood terms, and you're going to have misunderstandings where the guru will say or do something that you don't have the the ability to understand and you're going to accumulate emotional stress as a result because you can't resolve the misunderstandings. Now the process for resolving the emotional stress is to inquire submissively from the guru and say well what did you mean I didn't understand. See. Please enlighten me. What is the meaning? But what happens instead is that the ego justifies itself and says, actually, I'm right. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about, meaning the guru, the object, the person who is giving the terminology that the student is misunderstanding. So this emotional charge, because they cannot, out of ego, they cannot approach the guru and request a clarification. The emotional charge builds up to the point where it starts to become real suffering. And so at this point, the ego says, well, I can't be wrong. I must be right. So the guru is the cause of my suffering and they start to become angry, they start to become aggressive, they start to blame, cast blame against the guru. And this is called ninda, guru ninda, or guru aparad. And in both cases, it means the same thing, offenses against the guru. And this stops any progress in spiritual life right, right there. Huh? As soon as this emotion builds up in the heart and they start projecting against the guru, that's the end of their spiritual progress because all spiritual progress depends on a proper relationship with the guru. Uh, I'm not just saying this, Ramana Maharshi and so many scriptures and everywhere you look, you find the same instruction in the Vedas. So this is not something I'm just making up because it's convenient for me. No, this is a fact. If you lose your proper connection with someone on a higher level of consciousness, you can never attain that level. You're stuck right where you are until you resolve it. But because they misunderstand the fact that they have a misunderstanding, huh? They're misunderstanding their misunderstandings. And that's where the title of this video comes from. And if we really look into it, I bet most of you misunderstand the, even the title of this video. See? Misunderstanding, misunderstanding. The first misunderstanding is a verb. 
The second misunderstanding is a gerund, which is a verb form used as a noun. And it's the object of the first misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, misunderstanding. You misunderstood that you misunderstood. See? Because you don't have the complete definition of the words. This leads to emotional charge. And you say, oh, this guy is a... An egotist, he's ignorant, he's, <laughs> he doesn't really know anything, he's just making stuff up. In other words, they start projecting exactly what they're doing onto the person who is more advanced or more intelligent than they are. This is a very, very common psychological dynamic. Although, actually, I have never seen a standard psychological term for it. Now, in Scientology, they call it the overt motivator sequence. <laughs> huh? But it's the same thing. A person commits an offense against another, whether on an equal level or a higher level than they are, and then they have to justify their offense by painting the other person as being wrong, bad, having bad intentions, or being sinful or you know whatever the context is right so this is the thing when a person reaches self-realization after that no rules can apply to them now they may observe scriptural rules and regulations externally in order to set a good example for the students. But actually, they can do whatever they want and they're never going to lose their enlightenment because that's the nature of enlightenment. Once you get it, that's it, you got it, right? So they can do whatever they like. And sometimes gurus, enlightened people, will do things that are just really hard to understand. But we have to, accept this and take the attitude that he's on a higher level than I am. So I'm not going to understand a lot of the stuff he says and does. You know, and if you are a student of this person, it's your duty to go and inquire. Please tell me what this means. See? But because people have egos, and the ego has to justify its existence because it's actually unreal. <laughs> the ego will say, actually, I'm right and he's wrong. And then this leads to all kinds of bad behavior, all kinds of aggressive tactics against the guru. I saw it happen with my Adi guru and other gurus that I've had. I saw it happen with his guru Huh? And I saw it happen in my own life, in my own dealings with so-called disciples who, when they were confronted with things that they didn't understand, never inquired, never tried to resolve their misunderstandings out of pride, out of ego. And because of that, they became aggressive and tried to turn the situation around where they were right, they were in a better position, they were in a higher moral standard or whatever, and then uh, prosecute the guru and harass the guru and cyber stalk the guru and all kinds of other stuff they did, much of which is illegal. Huh? So this happens all the time in spiritual organizations. In fact, it's kind of the standard playbook. It's kind of really uh, expected to happen because you have a large group of people who are on a lower stage of consciousness and a large group of people who all agree they have egos, so the guru must be wrong, bad, mistaken, uh, phony, or whatever story they make up. Huh? And then because they have a, a size advantage, they can overwhelm the guru who is usually unsupported 
Huh? Just one person. This is why I said the guru needs a sidekick. The guru needs a, a kshatriya, a warrior, to defend him. Against who? Against his own disciples. To keep the disciples in line and keep them from harming the guru because of the emotional charge based on their misunderstandings. So this is the phenomenon of misunderstanding, misunderstanding. <laughs> and because they misunderstood that they misunderstood, then they try to make themselves right and justify their nonsense. And this leads to all kinds of terrible behavior. Now, this is the standard dynamic in a religious or spiritual organization. So this is what you have to watch out for as a student or disciple. If you ever start to feel that, wait a minute, this guy is just too far out. He's telling me all kinds of things that I just don't understand. You have to inquire. You have to inquire, find out the source of your misunderstanding. The onus is on you. The onus is always on the student, always on the disciple. That if you don't understand something, if you can't apply something, then you have to inquire and find out where you went wrong. Otherwise, you will fall into the trap of misunderstanding your misunderstanding. And that will lead to activities that will completely stop your spiritual progress for the rest of this lifetime, at least. Guru Ninda. Huh? If you become Guru Druha or Guru Droha in Hindi, then all spiritual progress for this lifetime is finished. And you won't be able to reach the final highest stage of enlightenment. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.